Hey, MCP fam. My name is Monty Sheher, a modern classroom expert mentor, and I teach middle school science in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, everyone. I'm Tony Rose, she, her pronouns, and I am a modern classroom program manager and former middle school English teacher located in Olympia, Washington. And this is Keeping Up with the Modern Classrooms. Um, so welcome to everyone if you are just brand new. Just a quick background, Monty and I worked together in DC and implemented the model um, in 2019 to 2020 school year when COVID hit. Um, and so that was where she taught science, I taught English, and we never turned back. But let us dive in for today. First of all, we want to um, go ahead and give our member of the month a shout out. This month, we are shouting out Amy. Um, we've noticed your positive energy in the group, and we're super impressed with that you are ready to implement the model after 28 years of teaching, um, which I know cannot be easy. So we just thank you so much for um, your willingness and your risk being a risk taker. Um, we thank you so much. If you're brand new to the Facebook group, um, Every week, we shout out two members of the month. You get a free sticker. And if you are the member of the month, you get a free T-shirt. Um, we choose these people based on engagement, their posts, resources shared, et cetera. Um, so thank you so much to everyone who's been contributing. And let's dive right in, Tony Rose. Yeah. And I also just want to name the fact that I am wearing makeup today. Do you all love it? <laughs> shout out to my sister. Um, she loves makeup. She's like, let me put on makeup. And I was like, all right, go for it. Didn't know I was going to the club tonight, but here we go. <laughs> so I digress. Um, we are talking about classroom design because Monty and I have seen such a spike um, on post about like how the classroom is going to look like. Even some of our members started putting videos and pictures of their classrooms and like it's September. So of course we're thinking about what our classroom is going to look like. And if you already started the school year, that's also okay. Um, you can always make changes throughout the school year, which is always so great about teaching. Um, and so with that being said, right, like, let's move forward. So <laughs> give me some time. I got to figure out how to share my screen. <laughs> do, 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 do. Well, you know, while Tony Rose is getting things started, um, we, again, just want to thank everybody for your willingness to share. It's been super nice seeing, you know, different designs uh, and seeing how people have things organized. And some of you have really big spaces and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. Um, I just love seeing your classroom. So thank you so much. Yeah. And um, another thing too, like shout out to these uh, teachers who did share the resources and then I bugged them for the link and so that I have their consent to share. Um, and so if you have the opportunity to join the Facebook group, just search for these teachers and you'll be able to see their classroom design as well. So we'll start off with Marissa. Um, she teaches high school social studies, which is really, really cool. And, um, and we're going to give you this in the show notes as well. So you have access to to watch the entire video so you can kind of see the setup of the classroom. But I really just wanted to highlight um, a couple of things that Marissa did. Um, and, it, and of course, you'll see a lot more when you watch the video. Um, but for this first one, let me see. When you get it, you're gonna big green dot. I really, really love this. Um, so this is a station in her classroom where basically students are picking up paper versions of their classwork. And the colors mean, um, the colors are basically like must do, should do, aspire to do. And so you can kind of see so here. The green is the learn. These are our must do's. And we'll go a little Red bit faster. There's always going to be our uh, should do's or our learn mores. Red is going to be our CERs, our Connect, Expand, and Reinforce, or our Aspire to Do's. And you'll have these here for each lesson. If there are multiple learn activities or learn more activities, you will then see additional folders. And you just have to yeah, so if you have any questions about these folders and how that look like, I know that we've been getting a lot of questions about like, how can this be paper-based? Like, does it have to be all in technology? And you actually don't have to use technology the entire time. You can have paper um, tasks um, as well for students. You just have to figure out where you're gonna put them in the classroom. One thing that I really love about the videos is that we can really visualize um, the whole entire classroom. And I, I believe it is Marissa who um, added this in her like unit zero as well. So that's an option that you could do is 
like you record your classroom and then you're able to share that video with your students and families so that they know where to find everything in the classroom. Um, another thing that I really liked about this video too is the genius bar. And so um, this is something that Marissa named the genius bar and this is where the mastery um, check is happening. And so she actually has here like 213, if you look here, I, let's see if we can, yep, there you go. There's the rules for mastery checks, which I thought was phenomenal. I love that. And then she also had um, a waiting list so that students weren't just waiting around, um, but they could put their names on there and then they could continue moving forward until um, they are able to do their mastery check. So those are just some ideas for you that Marissa highlighted, and I'm sure that you'll find a little bit more um, in um, the whole video once you watch that video. And again, thank you, Marissa, for sharing your resource. And then we have Sarah Webb, who teaches grade six math. And this, again, is um, shared in the Facebook group. And a couple of things that Sarah did, which is really cool. And I know Monty and I were watching this and Monty was like, oh, my gosh, these classrooms are beautiful. <laughs> Um, I think we're just so excited to be back in the classroom amidst the pandemic, right? There's a lot of uncertainties, but it is really, really nice to just be surrounded by students because, you know, we teach because of our kids. And so being able to see different spaces and different content and how modern classroom looks like is really, really, really great. So again, thank you, Sarah, for sharing your resource with us. Um, and there's a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Um, with Sarah, she also uses... Um, she also uses uh, paper base. So let me go to this one here. And this is basically the folder where um, students will pick up their folders and this is all of their guided notes for their um, instructional videos. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that, you know, because she teaches math, she does have um, whiteboards in each desk. And as you can see, the desks are um, in groups so that they're a little bit more collaborative. You can also see here that these are all the lessons, again, using lots of paper. Um, she does talk about how in lesson three, it's empty because that's where they are. And then so um, lesson four, and then she'll just fill that out when, um, when they get to those lessons. Another cool thing is this is her vocabulary wall, which I was like, oh, that's actually a great idea, especially, you know, for math. And so she has students basically define the words in a post-it notes and then put that on there as well. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to show is the mastery check um, nest of, uh, let me see. So this is her instructional nest actually. And basically you'll see her mastery checks here. It's color coded, there's version one, version two. She talks about this folder of students who need to make revisions, but essentially students will um, meet her in this instructional nest that she's created. And, and she also has a whiteboard so that she and the student can work together um, on their problems. And so again, shout out to Sarah. We really appreciate your work and continue sharing resources with us. And then we have Kelly Ross, who teaches high school English. And we also want to give, out, uh, give a shout out to Kelly, because Kelly has done some really cool things in the group. Um, there is a, a modern classroom um, subgroup for English teachers. So if you're interested in joining that, um, definitely reach out to Kelly. And so with Kelly, this is um, her high school English classroom. And again, you'll have the link. And so a couple of things that I wanted to highlight, um, I really, so she does talk about like her classroom library where um, students are gonna sit independently and read um, and all of that good stuff. And so I wanted to highlight her pit stop, which is right about here. Um, and so this is the, this is what she's coined pit stop. Um, and essentially this is where she and a student will work together as opposed to them working at her teacher desk, which I think was a great idea. Um, and then of course, um, she also has a board for reminders um, for any events that, you know, her students can participate in signing up for whatever they need to sign up, but um, sign up. Too. And so they, she just has this board that she'll have all of the daily reminders. Um, and then, you know, as, as you can see, when you watch these uh, the, the, the 
teachers' videos, you'll see that um, a lot of them have the pacing tracker up on the board. And so that's just a way for students, as soon as they walk in, they know where they are. There's no more question of like, where, what do I do next? You know, um, and they all know where the supplies are. And I think for Sarah's too, you can see there's like a part where she has all of the supplies for students to be able to choose from. And then students know to put it right back where it was. Um, so trying to think about how the setup is for um, your classroom can be a little bit challenging or it could be even be overwhelming. And so you come up with a great plan in the beginning of the school year and then you see like, oh, this part, there's bottlenecking here. There's like a whole crowd here. I got to figure out what what is going to work best for students. Right. And you could even again, I always tell my teachers, please invite students in ask for their feedback because they can come up with some better ideas than we can. Um, and so we have this. Monty, you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, so this came from another member in our Facebook group who teaches middle school history, um, grade six to be specifically. And what I like about this system is uh, she uses these colored clothespins. I think that's what they are. They're like clothespins, but they're colored. Um, and I believe they symbolize different things. So a student can put it on their computer to symbolize a different point in the lesson at which they are. Like, I, I, uh, I can't remember the actual breakdown of them, but I, I love this system of, you know, the teacher being able to look around the room and know exactly where students are. Um, and I know a lot of people are interested in like, well, where did you get the clothespin? I think any system where you can just have a really quick way of just a quick check-in around the room of where they are will work similar to this, but I think this way was a very cool way to very quickly assess where everybody is, what they're working on, who needs help, who doesn't, et cetera. And it also works very similarly to, I guess, um, we, in the, in the Facebook group right now, there's a lot of uh, information going around about this classroom queue kind of thing. I think this works very similar because if a green one symbolizes I don't need help, but red symbolizes I need help and yellow symbolizes maybe I need help, but it can wait kind of thing. You can also use a very similar system with a whiteboard where kids can put their name or the classroom queue, which is what the group has been talking a lot about. And it's a virtual queue. Basically kids can sign their name and say, hey, I need immediate help or I need help later. Um, and it just, it gives you an, again, another way to assess where they are, who needs help, et cetera. So whatever system you're using, whether it's a system like Don is using, which is really cool or the virtual system, which is also really cool, it works. Yeah, and I think with this one, again, I just really love visual aids. Um, it's a quick way for me to be like, oh, this many students need my help, or this many students are in their mastery checks right now. And so this is such a cool tool. I know that I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought about this. I used to have stickers on my desk. Um, and Monty and I were talking about, what is it? The classroom queue? Is that what it's called, Monty? Yeah. Classroom yeah. Too. Yeah. And, you know, with COVID happening, um, that's probably going to be a little bit um, better just because, you know, students are not touching anything um, or um, doing whatever else they need to do. Right. So the classroom queue definitely look that up. I, I believe I've never used it, but people speak really highly of it. So um, thanks, Don, for sharing your picture with us. Such a great idea. And then we have April's computer science, middle school computer science. And um, if you actually search for April's name on the Facebook group, you'll actually see um, you'll actually see multiple pictures. Um, and so we just kind of chose the two pictures to just to showcase how her classroom looks like. First of all, this classroom looks amazing. <laughs> it is it big and huge. Yeah, and she explains in the Facebook group that I think her school or her classroom, at least, is like a converted elementary school. And we know all know elementary classrooms are like big because, you know, I guess they need room for naps and things. I don't know what you're doing at the elementary level, but, you know, shout out to y'all because, whoo, uh, but very beautiful classroom, really nice setup. Um, I love all the color and like the bins, like, you know, being used to symbolize different classes. I tried to do that one year and then like didn't so april shout out to you because it is a lot of work to keep up with the color system but i love that you you have that and i guess once you condition kids to know well, you're always your class is always green you know um <laughs> That is so true, Monty. I look at like I look at this and I get really jealous, right? Of like, oh my gosh, my classroom does not look like this. So if you're a teacher and you're like, oh, this is not gonna work for me, like this is not how my classroom looks, that's also okay, right? Like what 
a teacher's doing doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do that as well. The color bins sound like a great idea, but if you're like, that's not my jam, you don't have to do it. It's just different ways of doing, um, different ways of organizing, different ways of like presenting. Um, there's no right or wrong way. I love that about our, our model. Um, and so you really just get to own this. So April, thank you for sharing your beautiful classroom. And if you read the comments, that's basically what all the comments say. It's like, oh my gosh, your classroom is so big. It's so yeah. big. And um, um, so if you want to check it out, definitely um, search for April's name as well. If you're curious about the bins, I know for a fact that they sell these bins in Target for $3 because I always get the bright idea of at the start of every year, it's like, oh, they put out pastel colors. Let me go just buy you. So I have one of each random color. This is why I can't color code because I go in the store and I'm like, oh my gosh, they have seven colors. I'm just going to get one of each. And then I realized later on, what are you ever going to do with this bright orange spin? Nothing. You're such a teacher. I love it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They're $3 there at the start of the year. They're $3 in Target, y'all. So like I buy like 10 every year and now I have like 25 of them. So for no reason. For no reason at all, Monty. So it's just taking up space. Um, but also it's Target. <laughs> uh, some Target, you know, a red card. I, you know, I just, I gotta, I gotta say it. Um, and then, of course, we have this other option, which some teachers may be teaching online or hybrid, because that's probably what's going to happen um, if we don't uh, get COVID together, right? And so uh, Jamie is actually, I believe, one of our mentors, which is really cool, but this is a digital classroom that you can also put together. I know that this got really big, a Bitmoji classroom got really big last year. Monty was actually the one who introduced me to Bitmoji classroom, and I was like, how do you do it? So she provided me with some resources, and I just had a lot of fun with it, actually. Um, I took too much time, putting it together. So again, if you're like not the person to put something like this together, that's also okay. Like it is a okay. But right here, um, Jamie's digital classroom is just, there's hyperlinks. So they click on lesson one, the students will just be able to go straight to lesson one, lesson two, three, four. And then all of these uh, pictures also have a hyperlink that students can join. So it's just basically like a homepage for students to be able to access what they need to access pretty quickly. Um, and so, these are just some things that um, teachers and members have been posting in the group. I'm sure that there are a lot more. Um, so, you know, continue to like share that with us. And um, I we've seen a lot of like whiteboard stuff. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for right now. Monty, I actually want you to talk about your classroom setup because I know how much you love your classroom setup this year. <laughs> yes. Can you show my Bitmoji classroom scene real fast? I just dropped the link because, you know, your girl worked hard on this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so Hold on, I will, no, I'll show it, I'll show it. Hold on, Monty, you worked, you worked your tail off on this, so yes, I'm I going sure to share did. it. Okay, hold Last on, hold on. Year, I worked Give hard me. on it. Damn. Look okay. at that, y'all, look okay. at that. Monty yeah. with the Bitmoji classroom. Yeah, it, it had to be this long because Canvas had, I used Canvas, and Canvas had very special specifications of how long a banner could be, and it had to be this long. But like, I'm, re it just, you know. Anyway, that's Maybe real I, cute, Monty. No, I got the science posters going. I'm just kidding. You know. I know you got a whole couch. You got books. If I click on the books, is it hyperlink or not? Nah? It hyperlinked. Oh, right now, I only hyperlinked it. I like added um, things on Canvas because it wow. Canvas but anyway, you know, so Bitmoji is fun to play around with, whether we're virtual or not. They're just fun, you know, for modern classroom. You can you can you can add them on uh, Google Classroom now I think uh, or do like the moving. I was watching a video about how you can use Canva to make gifts for Google Classroom, um, and it's also pretty cool. So if you're just you know want to be extra, you know, do you? Um, yeah. But yeah. So I know we spend a lot of time, especially at the beginning, stressing about you know classroom design and how to make it beautiful. And you know I was in the same place because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be at a new school. It's gonna be super exciting. You know. Um, People that teach science know that oftentimes we don't get windows. So like it had all this natural light. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cool. And then I found out that I'm a floater, y'all. I am a floater teaching science, okay? Um, and after I, I was disappointed and I might've shed a tear or seven. Um, but then after I took some time to reflect, I was like, you know what, it's not the end of the world. So while I do not have the flexibility of like some of our other 
you know, educators and that you have the say so in um, pretty much designing how the room looks. I just kind of push into other teachers' classes and kind of fit in where I can sort of thing. But what I have mastered is the power of a cart, man. Carts are saving grace. So if you don't have a dedicated space or you also just don't have the capacity to like do all of the things right now, getting you a pretty robust cart and having things live on the cart really makes life easy. And I push my cart around campus and I have a little bag that I carry my computer and stuff in and it works. Um, and so what I've done is I have, my cart is a three-tier cart um, and it's like a, one of those big ugly black ones. But then like, once you add all your stuff, no one knows that it's like ugly, um, but it's three tiers. And so, you know, on the very top, I put like individual student materials that I know I need to carry around from class to class. Below that, I put like other things like colored pencils, markers, et cetera. And then on the very bottom, I don't know, just random stuff that I like throw down there. Um, and then luckily all of these classes have counter space. And so I just arrange things on a counter. So you can still teach your students routines and still teach them where things will be. Um, but you just have a little bit more work in that it's not necessarily always set in stone. Um, sometimes I come in and the teacher has changed the classroom around because they're like, oh, we're doing an activity today. And you know what? You just roll with it and it's okay. And modern classroom works regardless of if your class is beautiful or not. What I have been kind of forced to do and more than happy to talk more about this like later, but I just do a lot of things virtually now, not even through like a classroom, but just like hyperdocs are really great places that like housing, kind of like a digital, it's like digital right now. So my students really access, even if I'm giving them physical copies of papers, I have them access everything via a calendar where I link kind of like our presentations and like documents and things like that. So just be creative with it. It's not the end of the world. Um, and I'm saying that to still convince myself that it's not the end of the world. If you don't have your own dedicated space, um, this still works. Um, you just gotta be a little bit more creative with your thinking, so. Yeah, I was definitely there. Um, the day that Monty found out she wasn't gonna have her own classroom and uh, it was a sad, sad day. Cause I know as teachers, you know, we need to have our own space and it's kind of hard trying to figure out and maneuver how we're going to share space, especially if the other teacher's not doing modern classroom, right? So it's a lot of like figuring out what the um, classroom agreements would look like, where your placement is and all of that good stuff. So I've never had a cart before, but I know my last year of teaching, it was my 10th year of teaching when I implemented the model was that um, they I was actually going to teach in three different classrooms and I was like oh no <laughs> not that's not happening not at all so shout out to Emily Culp um, who figured out a plan for me and so she and I ended up sharing a room together and she actually moved one of her classes it was a support class to another group uh, to another classroom just so that we can have all of our core classes in one room so Emily and I shared the same space we figured out where we were going to put our binders, our um, paper copies of the guided notes or the tasks that we have, um, what we were going to use the whiteboard for, uh, where we were going to place the pacing tracker. So there's a lot of communication. And I was fortunate enough to have um, to have Emily, who's also implementing the modern classroom model for the very first time. So we were just each other's thought partners. We leaned in. Um, we leaned on each other as well. Um, but I didn't have my own space. It was me and Emily's space, right? So, and that's typically what's happening um, nowadays as well. And so that's okay. Just like what Monty says, be creative with it. Be patient with yourself. Um, you know, have open communication if you're sharing spaces, um, being direct with communication and like the expectations and all of that. And your students will basically, our students are really good at you know, adjusting to different spaces. So we never have to worry about the students. I feel like it's adults that we sometimes have to worry about, but other than that, like students are great. Um, another thing that we wanted to touch base on as well is um, COVID, right? So how does this look like for your school? Sometimes like, you, you know, I know some teachers are saying, well, we have to have assigned seats because that's a way for us to track um, whatever we need to track, right? And that makes sense. And so then there's questions of like, well, how do we do collaborative spaces? Um, Monty, do you have any thoughts on that? I have my own thoughts, but I'm not in the classroom right now. So Monty, I'm going to throw that at you. Yeah, so um. I know COVID's a thing. Um, we're we're full in person, and um, all the the students wear masks. And um, I think that I am extremely fortunate to be in a situation where I teach seventh grade, um, and a good chunk of our student body 
is vaccinated. So a lot of what I feel like we're able to do, you might, a lot of people might not be able to do just depending on the demographic or where they are in the country. Um, but when we do collaborative work, um, we do have to have assigned seats for contact tracing. Um, and we were told that students are allowed to work in groups, but again, groups have to be set. Uh, and it has to be people that are similar to them, I guess, in terms of the seating chart. Um, but we're still asking that they be three feet apart. Um, so if you're fortunate to have a, a big enough space where like, even if students are working together, they're still three feet apart. And luckily I teach science. And so oftentimes with science tables, if you have one kid on one end and one kid on the other, normally that's like a far enough space. Um, so I do a lot of partner work. Um, I have done a group of three earlier and just been really creative, like earlier this year, just being really creative with the three feet thing. Um, but we, we tend to just do it kind of like normal, just making sure that we're three feet apart, everybody's masked. Um, if I know that we're going to be in a situation where, um, you know, I teach science labs, everybody has to sanitize, even me, we like all sanitize beforehand um, and things like that. Um, other things though, um, online discussions are always really well. I've, I know Tony Rose is a big fan of Parlay and I'm sure she's going to talk about it. I've never used Parlay outside of like doing what an activity, but just um, having them like do collaborative like Google Docs together where they're like working together where they don't necessarily have to be sitting near each other but they can communicate um ways like that are all ways uh that students are collaborating I also like to have like whole group discussions as a way another way of like you know doing collaboration um because again it forces them to kind of like be like okay well this person said this here's what I think etc um so just really being mindful of when you're building those moments in especially into a modern classroom yeah, and that was what we were talking about earlier too with the clips, like the clips are a great idea, right? Um, and then the classroom cue, just keeping in mind, like we don't want kids or students touching the same thing over and over again, just because of, you know, all of that. Um, so just keeping in mind too, that we may have to lean in on technology as well, if you have technology in the classroom, but if you really need to use paper, um, that's also okay. Like do what works best for you. Um, but just, I know we know that there are guidelines and there are expectations because of COVID. So continue to follow that. And when you're seeing everybody else's classroom spaces, try not to compare because comparing is not going to do anything. It's just going to make you a little bit more flustered and overwhelmed and see like really what works for you and your students. Um, before we go, I do want to briefly mention supplies that we need um, for the classroom. And so I know like in the video, you'll see that teachers have folders. It could be like the prompt folders or the binders. Um, they have post-it notes, they have markers, they have um, headphones. Um, what are some other things that you're thinking of, Monty? Um, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. And I think like when it comes to supplies that you that are needed, I think it also truly depends on like the type of environment you in. I work in an independent school where like kids showed up on day one, they get these supply packs and they have all the supplies that they need sort of thing. So I found that really all I've needed to provide them, even though I have pencils and erasers, the biggest thing is headphones for me. Um, because they break the ones they get very early on. They like break them. So headphones are really big. Um headphone splitters like later when COVID chills out I guess like kids like to be able to do that but I think headphones honestly is like the biggest um because in order for this to truly work kids need to be able to listen to the video and I tried one day in class allowing them to like play them very when you say put it on low volume they don't put it on low volume they start off putting on low volume but then someone else turns it on and on low volume and then they're like I can't hear and next thing you know you have seven kids who are playing the video. And if you're like me, the sound of your voice makes you cringe. I was like, oh my God, this doesn't work. Um, so headphones, 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 um, which I know again, goes back to a cost thing and whether or not um, you can afford them. I was fortunate that I was able to get adopted by someone last year and they bought me 25 pairs of headphones, cost like $80. Um, and a teacher did that. I mean, a, a parent was like, okay, I got you girl. I was like, great, thank you. Yeah. Um, and the thing with headphones, you don't need a whole class set. Like we only had eight headphones. Emily and I only had eight headphones that students can borrow. Um, and then of course, keeping in mind, you need hand sanitizers, you need wipes, all of that good stuff. So buying headphones that are easily cleanable and wipeable, yeah. the ones yeah. over the ears instead of the in the ears would be really, really good as well. Um, headphone splitters, I'm a huge fan of headphone splitters. So that's a great way for students to collaborate with each other. And also they're gonna be like three feet away from each other 
there also if that could work. Um, again, keeping in mind, you know, the COVID guidelines and expectations too. So, but headphone splitters and headphones are the ones that are like my go-to. You just need to have them just so that students can function. Another thing that Debbie and I, another program manager we're talking about is that um, if your school is one to one, make sure you have like a charger or two for those students who are going to be like, oh, Miss D, my computer's dead or like, oh, I can't do anything. Right. So in my class, we had an extra laptop that students could check out if they came in without their laptops. And I also had chargers for them in case their laptops are dead or their devices are dead. So just keeping that in mind as well, too, just to kind of make sure that students are able to access all of the work. There are some teachers who printed out everything as well so if they didn't have their laptop then that's okay that's okay they could just you know do the headphone splitters watch the video and then everything else was on paper um so toy around with it see what works um again no right or wrong um way to do it and so with that monty you want to talk about next steps so as always our next steps we do a twitter chat um the week after we post the video. So just for references, if you're new here, two weeks from now, the vid this video that we're recording right now will be posted. A week following from that, we will then do a Twitter chat about our topic. Um, it happens at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're a Twitter person and you wanna just continue the conversation with Tony Rose and I, share more pictures of your space, ask us questions, talk about what you're doing, we would love to have you join us. And that's really all we have for today. We thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and again, as Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus would say, because she's our, she's bomb, uh, take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. See you all next month. Thank you, thank you.